How much? You're telling these people to open the vertical, but you're giving them no guide. A millimeter, two millimeters, three on odd days, four on even days. See, it becomes arbitrary. And if you've never used the equipment, it's easy to, to speak negatively about it. Okay? So you can evaluate. I'm oh, well, sorry. Yes. You go back to on 4 2 was his initial exam. This was his original fairgometer. Daytime is huge. He's an athlete. I mean, he's tough. Look at his collapse. Okay? Minimum 1.23, average of 1.56. I, and I'm willing to admit this, I did not look at this. I went straight to my ICAT scans. I went straight to the di I went straight to looking at occlusion. I went straight to the TMJ, and I just really didn't look at this. Okay, so it was kind of an oops on my part. But when I wasn't getting the job done, does that mean we need more treatment or more diagnosis? More diagnosis. So I went back over my results and the data and everything we collected, and I looked at this and I said to myself, "What in the hell did I miss?" When you see a collapse like this, it's quite likely he's doing what in his sleep. Remember, this is best case scenario. And he's down here. Okay, here's two, one and a half, one point. Okay, he, his airway is very collapsible, isn't it? And I had overlooked it. I had overlooked it. But luckily, I went back uh, and kind of took a look at it. I looked at the nighttime the programmer I put in his mouth, and it actually helped him. Okay, it actually it helped him, but it wasn't enough. It isn't the end all. Why else would we use pharyngometry? All right, evaluate the positional efficacy. Show you these little jigs, and these are really brilliant. Okay, you can use different jigs, different sizes, and do different pharyngometric tests to see which vertical dimension might help the patient. Compliance, and not everybody's going to get the same frame. All right, you, you're be a home run. Okay, but he, I love, we'd love to do a pharyngometer on you. It's probably a genetically small airway is his problem. And he might not collapse at all because he looks kind of fit. So his prognosis would be, we'll do the best we can and make sure he doesn't have any nasal patency issues. However, your prognosis for opine therapy might be better than his. Wouldn't you want to know that? Or would you rather just kind of give everybody the same appliance and give everybody a, a somnodent and just sort of do it the same way? Or might you want to tailor your treatment to that specific patient? That is my point. And you just bad them. I mean, you're going to throw, what is it? 3%, 4%? Percent, percent? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of? That's what, that's what I've read. You also don't do it. But, well, well, you don't do it. Right. So it happened. Well, I caused zero laryngitis spasm with my endoscope. What's he doing? Man, he turned around right away. But he wants to see what? Well, he doesn't know what he's looking at. He wants to see it. <laughs> Patients are affected dramatically by this instrumentation. Okay? I don't care what your opinion of the instrumentation is. Patients want to know what their numbers are. So we start doing this, and no one else in your community, let's say someone else in your community says they do oral appliances, all right? but they don't have instrumentation. I mean, and you do, who's gonna have the greater effect, just impact perception on the patient? You are. I mean, it, I mean you whipped right around. Ed, it's so funny, patients just, you know, okay, they wanna see. And when you position your equipment, you have to be careful that they can't see the screen. Because you'll be right here, and they're kind of like, one to go over here and see the screen. Kind of, it's hilarious. But again, the assistants do all this. All these tests have been done by my assistants. I get the printed copy brought to me when I'm in with the console. Okay. What is the blue line? Really? Worst case scenario. You had no time to titrate him. You've had no time for his airway to heal. You've done nothing other than arbitrarily open him up and move him forward. Have you done anything to fine tune this gentleman or let him heal? Remember, once you reduce the negative air pressure on the lumen of the, on the epithelium, it is going to do what? It is going to shrink, which will do what to the caliber of the airway? Open it up. So while what you're doing is, is you're comparing the absolute best case scenario to nearly the worst case scenario, and look at the result. Do you see a change in his airway? Did we tighten his sails by stabilizing his jaw, which in turn stabilizes his highway bone? 
all the related summary criticism, but the Muller maneuver, meta maneuver, is a homologic maneuver. Right? Been, it has been validated sitting up and lying down by medicine. This is not a dental maneuver. We don't have to explain this to our medical colleagues. This is their stuff. We're just measuring. Okay. And the advantage of this over the endoscope is we can look with an endoscope, we can measure the dynamic changes of the airway all the way down to the epiglottis. Would that be valuable if you're treating airway issues? Would you want to know if you had a genetically small airway? Would you want to know up front if you could make changes, just arbitrary changes in vertical and AP position and tighten up the sails? Would you want to know that? Yeah. And we don't, I don't have a sleep been in my office, so I mean it would be nice if I could do, here's your appliance, you know, let's do a sleep study, come back in a month, you type, you push it forward, we'll do another sleep study, we'll do, it just isn't economically practical. I mean, the pediatricians argue that doing a sleep study on a child post TNA surgery is not economically feasible. So how are we going to do PSGs three or four times on our patients when we're doing the appliance? We can't. But what we can do is put an appliance in his mouth, and then six weeks from now, when we have you back to check it, we can redo these tests. And how have we changed an altered the airway? And Bob's kid, Bob Borchover's kid, comes with these little shims. Two millimeters, three millimeters, four millimeters, and I've got a real burr up my butt. Because one of the old stirs from the Academy of Dental City Medicine said, this equipment had no value, but, if your appliance isn't working, just increase the vertical dimension. Okay, uh, how much? How far? Well, just do it. Wait, there's no, there's no guides. With this, we actually, at the second and third follow-up appointment, I'll, we schedule half an hour with one of my assistants who will use the shims and check different vertical changes in the appliance to see if we can maximize those numbers. Is it a golden position? No, but it is a trend. At least we can quantify what we're doing, and we can show, you know what, if I did increase the vertical two millimeters, we actually were able to increase his minimum by 10%. Would that be a value to you if you're working with these medical appliances? Absolutely. But you're going to use this pharyngometer just about every time the patient walks in the door. And again, doctors, how much time does it take you to do a pharyngometric evaluation? It takes me like this much time. How long does it take you to take an x-ray? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how long does it take you to take an x-ray? I don't really know. I don't even know if I could take an x-ray. Um, so that's the point. Very, now you're starting to see how this is very assistant driven. Very assistant driven. Do you do this on all new patients? All new sleep patients? Uh, no, all new patients. Uh, no, all new sleep and all new TMJ and ortho patients. If I identify something on a new dental patient that raises my suspicion, then they go right into this stuff. Because of the crossover between TMD and OSA. You'll find that your TMD patients, 72 to 74% of the time, have OSA. To me, TMD used to be the center of my universe. Reason is when I cured when I treat cures when I treated the TMD, most of my patients restored their lives. But um, it isn't the end all. Why else would we use pharyngometry? All right, evaluate the positional efficacy. Show you these little jigs, and these are really brilliant. Okay, you can use different jigs, different sizes, and do different pharyngometry tests to see which vertical dimension might help the patient. Okay, maybe we need to add two million. Like, where's that uh, purse? Where's that appliance? Right there. Okay, I love this appliance because just throw it. That's see Henry one here. <laughs> okay, this is a great appliance because not only can you advance the mandible through the expansion screw here, and if you if you let's say you use up all the expansion you need, all the advancement, you can put shims in here very easily. It, it has a lot of advantages. But let's say we find that by adding, say, two millimeters of acrylic in front, we might improve the collapsibility of the airway. Well, how easy is it to grind on this and add a couple millimeters of triad? We do that every day, probably one to five times a day in my office. We're playing with that vertical dimension. 
is that substantive in terms of maximizing airway? Yeah, you've got AP, but you're also going to have vertical. So how would you know how much vertical to add? I mean, what would be a guide? Rolling the dice? Throwing a dart? Or maybe measuring? 